Well, plants in our medicinal herb garden have grown a lot since we set them out this spring. You remember they were very tiny. And I wanted to take just a little bit of time to go over some of the cultural requirements and the uses of these plants. Now, first off, this plant is vervian and it's a verbena. Its Latin name is Verbena officinalis. And if you look down here at the base of the plant, you can tell that. Um, you'll notice that these leaves look just like a regular verbena. Now this plant is a tender perennial. It is a perennial, but it's short-lived, but it recedes very easily. So it, it's a fairly easy plant to grow, and it likes a hot, sunny place with good drainage. Now this plant was traditionally used in medieval medicine, and um, it has kind of fallen out of favor. The part of the plant that is used most is the root that has the most medicinal value. And actually, uh, what Vervian is used for a lot now is to make a soothing bath. Now, our next plant over here is the lamb's ears. And while this is used a lot as an ornamental plant, it is also a medicinal plant. Now, the lamb's ears are very appropriately named because they feel so nice and soft. And the part that is used on this plant is the leaf. This has a little bit of antiseptic qualities to it and traditionally the leaf was used as a wound dressing and it's a very soft leaf and feels very good to the skin. So this was used as a wound dressing. Now cultural for lamb's ear is basically to plant it in a sunny location with good drainage. It is pretty forgiving of the soil type that it has as long as it has good drainage. Now we have some of this planted at our front gate and we have one side that is in full sun that's doing quite well while the other side that is partially shaded is not growing quite as fast. So that's a very um, evident that lamb's ear likes the sunny areas. Now this will send up a bloom here. You see these bloom spikes and what you need to do as soon as these go to seed, like this one here is right here, it's just to cut these off, deadhead them basically, back down at the rosette base. Now, here I've got one, and you'll notice that the rosette base is clear back down in here. So come back down into the plant and cut that off down here for those seed heads, and that will keep the plant looking more tidy. Now next to this, we have a plant, and this is actually my favorite plant out here in the medicinal herb garden, and this is germander. Now again, the useful part of this plant is the leaf. These have been used traditionally um, to steep in a tea, and they were used to treat gout and rheumatism. But actually, the great use for this plant is as an ornamental. This is a small perennial, and it's an evergreen perennial, and it can actually be used um, in knot gardens and as an edging, and traditionally has been used as a substitute for boxwood. And so we're anxious to see how this plant does. It has a very nice shape, beautiful dark green leaves, and if you prune this in the spring, it'll keep that nice compact shape, so it's easy to train in a knot garden type setting. Now here we have our wild white yarrow, and this is Achillea millifolium. And yarrow is a great plant, um, and you've seen it used a lot as an ornamental plant, but the wild white yarrow is the type that's used as a medicinal plant because it has more of the medicinal qualities. Now, the part on this that is used are the leaves and also in the flowers. However, the flowers are more potent medicinally. Now, it's been used to stop bleeding and use um, to heal wounds. And that's part of the name of, the Latin name of wild white yarrow is Achillea millifolium. And Achillea has, is said to be associated with Achilles, who used this plant to press on the wounds of the soldiers in battle to heal them. Now next to this, we have St. John's wort. And this is a shrubby type of perennial, kind of low growing, and spreads out, and this has a yellow star-shaped flower that should start blooming here fairly soon. Now the medicinal part of this plant is the flower, but in addition to being a medicinal plant, it's also a very good dye plant. The flowers 
um, make a very nice dark red dye. And so that's something to think about using this for. Now over here we've got one that's in bloom. And again, this is another perennial that we have, and this is Arnica. Now Arnica has these nice yellow flowers, and this is the medicinal portion of this plant. Now this plant is used um, to make a salve or a rub to be applied externally for eggs and pain. Now, Arnica is one of those plants that, while it works very well externally, it wouldn't be something that you'd want to take internally because it's, it's not good to digest, but it is good as a salve. Now, next to that, we have a very large plant here. This is an Artemisia, and its common name is Mugwort. Now, traditionally, this plant had many uses. It was used to ward off evil spirits. But one of the uses that we would have for it now is that it is a good moth repellent. You can actually cut these and dry them upside down and hang them around to repel moths. So that is a very good use for this plant now. Now here we have a little low growing plant. It's very unusual looking. And this is actually the only annual that we have in our medicinal herb garden. This is appropriately named toothache plant because to chew on the leaves will numb your mouth. Now, the other unusual thing about this plant is that the bloom doesn't even look like a flower at all. It looks like a little gumball here. We have these little round yellow and red gumball looking flowers here. And this makes a very unusual looking plant. Now, this likes full sun, well-drained soil, and uh, slightly dry, and it spreads quite well. This is spread out quite a bit for us here this summer. Now, this plant is very pretty, and you can actually use this a lot as an ornamental in the garden. And this is feverfew, and it's um, in the chrysanthemum family. And you might be reading about feverfew a lot in the news and in research right now because they're using this plant uh, to treat migraine headaches. So there's a lot of research being done right now on feverfew and its ability to help with migraine headaches. Now, it got its name because it was traditionally used to treat fevers. And one thing you might want to remember about feverfew, if you use it in your garden for an ornamental, don't plant it next to anything that needs to be pollinated because bees don't like feverfew and this will keep them out of the area. So if you're going to have vegetables and things that need pollinated, don't put feverfew close to those. Now here we have a very nice petite little plant and this is ladies mantle. Now this is a very nice leaf, and the nice thing about ladies' mantle leaves is they actually collect water at the center of the leaf here, and it makes a nice drop in the center, and traditionally alchemists use this. They called that drop alchemist brew. Now here we have a plant known as motherwort, and it is a perennial that has been used traditionally to treat female ailments, and this is a very nice plant. It has beautiful dark green leaves with deep veins and some good serration around the edge. So this is a very nice plant for the garden. Now our last plant in here is known as Heal All because traditionally it was thought to heal all ailments. And so this plant is a good plant for a traditional herb garden. It, it is a perennial. It likes sunny area. It can be planted in partial shade. So this is a very good plant for the herb garden. Now, if you're going to grow medicinal herbs, I would recommend that you check with a professional and not self-treat with these. Our herb garden is mainly for display to show traditional uses of these herbs. If you're interested in herbs and you need a good resource, the Brodale Illustrated Encyclopedia of Herbs is a very good resource book. It's very easy to read. It tells some of the history and the culture of the herbs. And also, there's a good magazine, The Herb Companion. If you're interested in both medicinal and culinary herbs, this is a great magazine to get. It comes out six times a year. And it has a lot of good articles and good recipes. So think about putting in an herb garden for display and for history so you can learn about herbs. We hope you've enjoyed this classic from the Oklahoma Gardening Vault. 
Remember, even though these tips and techniques are timeless, there's always something new to learn in the world of gardening. By subscribing to both Oklahoma Gardening and OK Gardening Classics, you'll have access to a wealth of gardening knowledge, both classic and contemporary.